What do you take out of it, Patriot Honk over there? Patriot Honk. Rich, I prefer voice of New England sports. Okay. <laughs> uh, I love it. I, I'm not sure Mac Jones is rookie of the year offensively. I, I mean, I kind of like some of those other guys. I like Najee Harris and, and Jamar Chase a little bit better, but uh, I think this is a playoff team. And, and while they're still a playoff team, like Tom said, it's still a rebuild. Like, we still need some more offensive weapons. Running game looks good. Still needs to shore up the offensive line. But the defense is playing top-notch football. And uh, that kind of goes back to the first kind of Patriot Tom Brady dynasty where Tom didn't have to do too much, do just enough, don't lose the game, let the defense finish at home. And that's kind of what you're seeing this year. I think the chase of Odell being in on it, okay, speaks to two things. One, they realize what they're missing. Yep. That they need someone to take the top of the defense off because Aguilar was supposed to be that. And he's not. He is yet to be that. Yeah. Okay. So they're like, okay, we we need that. It's something they need. Yep. But the fact that they would go and do it with, you know, week 10 upon us, I would imagine even if the news breaks now in the middle of this sentence <laughs> that Odell signs with the Patriots or someone else, that Odell wouldn't be on the field for week 10. You know? Yeah, probably not. And I think that was part of why Cleveland waited till Friday to do what they did because that meant he wouldn't clear waivers till Tuesday and then the free agent tour would take him off the chessboard for two games, you know, this week and the following. So that means you're getting him for from weeks 11 through 18, okay? You're getting him for the second half of the season. And the fact that they do that means, yeah, sure, could they bring him in now and get him up to speed on the Patriot way and then keep him in the fold? That, I assume, might be the idea of a team that signs him, right? I think so. Correct. So there's the now and then there's the over the steering wheel. But the fact that they're willing to do it now means they think they can win right now. And you have to look at the rest of this conference Look at the rest of the conference. Five and four is two games worse than the number one seed right now in the seven and two Titans. Five and four, okay, is a game and a half behind the only six-win team in the Ravens. And you're a half game behind a slew of five and three teams, and you've got the same record as four other five and four teams. This is a wide-open conference, man. Wide open. All right, the division is now something you could begin to talk about. You're a half game behind the Bills, and you've yet to play them yet, and you're probably very confident that you could do to Josh Allen what, you know, you have habitually done to other young quarterbacks. I know Allen finally broke through last year, but this is a different team, different defense now. You got to think about the division and also – you know who's on the Patriots' schedule? If you could put that up, Mr. Hoskins. The Titans are still on that schedule. So if you can keep winning and win your division and have in your back pocket a head-to-head against Tennessee, which is in three weeks from now, mm. their next three games are this game against Cleveland. They're at Atlanta on a Thursday night, short week. And then there, there's that home game on Thanksgiving weekend, that Sunday. There it is. Home for Tennessee and then at Buffalo by week, late by to get nice and healthy for the stretch run at Indiana, at Indianapolis. Their home game against Buffalo. Home for Jacksonville at Miami to finish where things go a little crazy. You you can make some hay here in those final eight games. Certainly the seven that you have with Odell, if you get him. And so you're thinking that. And also, if you're going to add a vocal wide receiver wanting the football, all right? Now, he may not have told his dad to cut the video and he wasn't in the edit room. <laughs> People ascribe that to Odell. But if you're going to bring somebody with that on his table and get him in the huddle with a rookie quarterback who has been just copacetic 
this year trending upward, and you're going to have somebody very vocal saying, get me the ball, and maybe make this young quarterback think, I've got to get him the ball. You're going to bring that into the equation. You're pretty damn confident that Matt Jones can handle it. That's what I'm seeing about the pursuit of Odell here. They feel like they need him. They see what their weakness is. They need somebody like him. That's an admission, if you will. And the other two are like, we can win now. We can make we can make a run. Two, three weeks ago, that's like, get out of here. Yeah. I just showed you the the reality, the boots on the ground of what you are in your record and what everyone else is with their record. Got to get to 10 wins. But you have Tennessee. You can take care of Tennessee yourself. Right? You're two games behind Tennessee right now. That's a team that's had, you know, their number. I get it. Few years. Here we go. That's a big game. By the way, same weekend of Packers and Rams, too. <laughs> that weekend's going to be amazing. But this is what uh, reading the tea leaves about Odell on the, the radar screen of New England shows that they need him. They have a shot to do it this year. The it being make some hay, go deep. And they believe in their quarterback to be able to handle it. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.